Hello everyone, welcome to Drama Free Friday. Just finishing a smidgen of prep work. I'm glad you're here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Just waiting for the chat to catch up with me. Hello, Melissa. Hi, Carla. Hey, Nancy. BJ, Margaret, Judy, Ina. Hi, Melody. Hey, Janice. Good to see ya. Nice to see each and every one of you. So, as I said, I was just finishing up some prep work. Hi, Annette. Hi, Deborah. Hello, Patty. I look like sunshine today. Woo! <laughs> That's good. Bring some sunshine into your world, huh? I hope that's a good thing. Hey, Cindy. We waited for you, Cindy. We sure did. <laughs> I wait as long as I can. What I have, well, I'll explain it to you when we get started. How's that? I know, sunshine's always a good thing, isn't it? So, I'm just chatting with people for a minute. If you're watching this recording and you don't want to watch this part, just don't look. <laughs> How's that? Just don't look. <laughs> like my little niece one time said when I was complaining about something. She called me Graham and she just looked at me and she says, Well, Graham, don't look up. If you don't want to see that thing. She was only about three. Big, big ears little kids have. She just said, don't look up. So, yeah, that's my attitude. If you don't like something, don't look. <laughs> Hi, Melody. Hey, Sarah, three dogs. I haven't seen you in ages. I hope you're doing well. Great to see your name in the chat, Miss Sarah. Sarah's in Scotland. At least I think she is. Last time I talked to her, she was. Hi, Dorothy. Hi, Jane. Hi, Linda. Let's see, who else? Um, hi, Shelly. Hi, Corrine. Corinne, Corrine, Corinne, I'm going to say. From Switzerland. Wow. Welcome. Um, I have not seen... Let's see. Did I see Stephen? Hi, Stephen. Um... I haven't seen Miriam from Israel for a really long time, so I just want to give her a shout out and say if you're watching the recording, we miss you in the chat, so if you have a chance to come chat with us and catch up a little bit, I'd love to see you. Hi, Francis. Um, let's see. Hi, Yvonne. Okay, what did I say? Hey, Travis. Just catching up with everybody. Hello, Linda. That's right, scrud shirt. That's right. Oh, good, Sarah. That's great. Hi, Melissa and Dorothy and anybody that I said hello to two times. Hi, Lori. Um, you got welcome twice. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for being here. So it is Drama Free Friday. And uh, yeah, I'm Barb Owen of HowToGetCreative.com. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for joining me. And it is uh, Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern or thereabouts, which is when I stream every week. <clears throat> and um, yeah, so I'm glad you're here. Good group coming in. We usually chat a little bit during the live show just in the beginning so people can kind of get here and get settled in. And then we just start to doing who knows what. So I will tell you just a little bit of... Um, in case we have new people, it seems like we have new people every week, which is wonderful. I, you are always welcome. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for being here. Um, every week we do something creative, and you never know exactly what it's going to be. I am, as I said earlier, I'm Barb Owen of HowToGetCreative.com, which is a membership website. We'd love to have you check us out. There are a variety of membership levels located there. <coughs> you can check, <coughs> excuse me. Too much talking already. Um, 
there is a membership level that you can try us out for a month a monthly ongoing membership which is what many people choose you can also try it out for just a month or you can become a VIP member which in, entitles you to some extra stuff so anyway would love to have you check us out over there this show on Friday is a free free show and you never know what's going to happen the classes on the website in case any of you are wondering are also creative classes that cover a wide variety of subjects they are different than what we do here they are much more in depth they are um, they also the the classes from the different seasons we're on season four right now the classes in the seasons include a full-length written tutorial with pictures from the video class so that you can print that out and you can follow along uh, we often have, not always, but sometimes we have patterns and, and uh, worksheets and things like that that go with the class. There's also a whole section of tips and tricks videos, which are short videos about one specific thing. Sometimes I include videos on my favorite things, my favorite books, um, different art supplies and things like that. So anyway, that's a little bit about that. Um, let's see what else we got going on here just saying hi Pavla nice to see you um hi Frederica hi Jill got a day off from work good um uh oh Cindy's husband just got home uh oh that takes care of that hey Vicky <sighs> uh, let's see okay so just saying hello to everyone and we're going to get started because we got a lot to do today. So I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for taking time out of your, I know, busy schedules to be here with me and with all of us. So there is a live chat associated with this live stream, which is part of the reason that would love for you to join us live because then you get to chat. You can ask questions of me or chat with me. And by the way, if you're trying to say something to me, do put it in all caps. <laughs> <laughs> there's as Nancy can tell you there's no guarantee that I'll see it even if it's in all caps but I do try <laughs> I do try um, but there uh, the chat starts going and if I'm concentrating on something sometimes I just flat out don't see it so don't I'm not offended uh, if you try several times to get my attention that is perfectly fine so there is a live chat going on so I will be interacting with the viewers and answering questions and comments and so forth and so on hello JR <clears throat> and let's see oh boy let's see I think it's Kira right Kira Kira I hope Sorry, so I must be going to kiss a fool because I'm getting ready. Got the itchy nose. Don't tell Clausman. No, oh, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> Hi, Carol. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. He's the best. And we celebrated our anniversary last week, and that was wonderful. And he has a birthday coming up, and then we have Father's Day, and then my birthday comes up, and then... And then uh, the technical department has a birthday <clears throat> here for a few weeks. It gets a real celebratory around here. Hi, Jillian. Hi, Zandra. Okay, so last week uh, we talked about journals and the importance of journaling, you know, as far as... I know some people don't journal, but I just want to encourage you to think about it, you know, whether you do or don't. Um, I just want to encourage you to journal and I'm just showing you some different examples of journals that I have and I found a bunch more <laughs> I know who knew I would have so many journals that I could show you how many wonderful years 44 people 44 that's older than many of you have been on this earth <laughs> hey Jan <laughs> hi Annette um, yes that's older than a lot of you have been on this earth <laughs> of course, I got married as a child bride, so there is that. All right, but I found some more journals that I wanted to show you and a couple of other ways to journal that I wanted to talk about just for fun. <laughs> All right. Um, Yvonne has lots of journals, too. We beat you, Vicki. We beat you. Not by much. 
<laughs> Hello, Dawn. Nice to have you. It's your first time here. Great. That's wonderful. <clears throat> That's a whoopee for me. That's right. <laughs> okay, so I want to show you a couple of things. Um, one of the things I want to show you is... I'm just going to cover up a couple things here. Not for any big... Not for any big reason, it's just because I'm on around the world. It's like, you know, maybe I should cover up some of this stuff. <laughs> so, I want to show you this one. This, um, just to let you know that you don't have to do things that are fancy. Okay, so that's the whole point of, of this. And also to tell you that these, how valuable this kind of stuff can be. At least it is for me. Hi, Tallulah. Good for you. Oh, thank you, Dawn. That's very nice. Dawn says she loves my work. Good. I'm so glad. Um, so this is, this is some stuff that I found from my dad. Both, and, well, I should probably tell you this first. Both of my parents are gone. They have been gone for a number of years. My dad passed away in 2002. My mom left in 2006. So, yeah, it's been a while. But anyway, I found this. Um, I don't know exactly how I ended up being entrusted with this information, but it's in my possession. So guess what? It's mine. <laughs> so there you go. So this was from my dad. And my dad was a university professor. And at one point after he retired, he decided to take a class on uh, memoirs. And so he did that, how to write your memoirs and stuff. And so a lot of this was notes from his class. And even that is pretty, is pretty special, to have the notes from his class. And then he copied some, uh, this is an um, article from the newspaper. This is about his mother. And I have that in multiples in various places in my house. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. And this was where he was um, taking some notes to himself. So, you know, it's just even nice to have the old paper, you know, which is getting yellowed and, and um, what have you. This was from his class. This is my dad back here for whatever, you know, for whatever that's worth. This is some of the, the writings from different people. And so this is just all the stuff that what I want you to see is it doesn't have to be fancy, right? So he's got manila folders with stuff in here. This is exactly the way he compiled this information. And these are some of the things that I thought might be interesting for you to, this was what was covered in this class. So sometimes it helps if you will take a subject and, or a couple of words and you just write your memories about those words or a photograph if you find a photograph and you just write your whatever memories come up with that photograph. So this sort of ventures back and forth between scrapbooking, which I'm not a good scrapbooker at all. All my pictures are in a big old trunk, and if I'm lucky, they get into some photo albums. But this is, um, I could see doing this, you know, where, um, where you take a photo and you write your memories associated with it. So anyway, back to the back to the subjects. So I just thought I would tell you um, some of the things that they did in their class. Our new homes. So this was all about the different houses that they lived in. Much of this information I didn't even know about. Uh, family automobiles um, starting back in 1906. Well, that was his memory of his parents and so forth. Um, and so it was all about the different cars that he could remember. Family pets. So very subject oriented. Um, let's see what else. Uh, his band days. So he was in the band. He played in the band at. He went to the University of Illinois in Urbana, and he played in the marching band there. And he was actually privileged to play under John Philip Sousa, who was a guest conductor at one point, which was very cool. Um, then he wrote a whole thing about how he met and married my mother, which is, it's interesting. Here's what's interesting about it. It's interesting to read my father's perspective about things. Um, 
because I, it, I, my mother was much more likely to talk to me, but my father wasn't as much because he was a man and he was busy all the time. So to read his perspective on things that my mother talked about was really cool. Very interesting. Um, so my dad had a half sister. And so this is, is all about his memories of his sister and so forth. So again, more notes that he had and uh, World War II and so forth, just all that kind of stuff. And then back here is, these are his notes. So his handwritten notes about these various things that he ended up transcribing and, and writing in the memories. So, so the thing is, these don't have to be fancy, okay? So you don't have to have fancy journals, but this is a great, it's a phenomenal journal, right? It's a phenomenal journal. But, okay, so Nancy brings up a good point. She says that she does journal a lot, but she's not sure who will care. Okay, let me tell you about that. I don't journal, I don't journal for other people, I journal for me mostly and as I told you last week I journal so that I keep from blowing up <laughs> I also journal to untangle my thoughts but I just wanted to give you some some other ideas um, of ways to journal uh, here's another one this this is an interesting one just so that even if this were it, not my family, if this had nothing to do with my family, I would still find this fascinating. So, um, so Yvonne says she has lots of journals. Hi, Harley Ryder. Um, okay, Janice says she did a scrapbook on different on different schools when she was growing up. Ah, oh, cool. And. Um, she visited most of the schools, took photos, and did some of the journaling and put them all, put in all her report cards. Oh, how fun. Hi, Carol. CB Carol. Hi, Rocky. Um, yeah, she said, Rocky said it would be nice to have had something like that from her parents or grandparents. Exactly. And Linda McAllister does fake journaling. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's right. And that's a good point, too. She, uh, she talks about writing to get it out of her system but not necessarily for the purpose of someone else reading it excellent way to journal excellent um, Cindy says she loves making her own journals and doing what uh, what she wants to words pictures or whatever floats her boat absolutely I had hey Debbie I had some of the most incredible comments from last week's uh, video uh, last week's stream. So any of you that might be interested in reading those comments, even if you find this video years later, the comments should still stay there. I would encourage you to go back to the stream. These happen every week. So if you go to the one previous to the date on this one and read some of those comments from, from various viewers, it is phenomenal. It was just really neat to read them. Dorothy says she forgets to write. Dorothy, you need to write. Hi, Kasha. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Um, and CB mentally journals. There you go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yvonne says she writes for herself and not anybody else. Yes, Dawn. You're right. Journaling keeps you from blowing up family and friends. That's right. Okay. So I want to show you this one. Just, And I'm not going to belabor this whole journal thing too much. I just want to give you some different ideas and concepts of maybe some things you hadn't thought about. And these are old, so it might give you some ideas. Okay, so this one, again, in a notebook. This is from the 1906 diary of Frances Louise McClellan, who happens to be a grandmother of mine. So this is from the diary, and you can, let me get out of the picture so you can actually see. So this is a standard number 301 diary, 1906. So this is actually a scan of, um, of the diary itself, of the cover. And then there are some pictures that are included in this. And then whoever did this, they scanned and copied the pictures and printed them off. And they went to a lot of trouble. I did not do this. Someone else did this. And 
and put in tabs for the different months. Here's what's important and interesting about this is my, she started this on January 1 of 1906. This is all about my grandmother who the, she was married, she was married very young in her life and she married a man, she, this is prior to their marriage, he went to the Klondike in the gold rush. And so, obviously, there were no phones that, that you could use, and so they wrote letters back and forth to each other, and sometimes those letters took year, or sometimes months to get back and forth to each other, at, le at the very least, it was weeks. So what she was doing is she was writing in her journal all about this whole experience of waiting and receiving a letter and so forth and what the weather was doing and she made mince pies and um, so forth and so on and it's, it's just interesting. Then later Later, um, she, after she married the husband who came back, he made it back from the gold rush in the Klondike, and they got married, and they had a little girl, and then he passed away really fairly suddenly of the flu. It was called something else then, but it basically was the flu. And then she was by herself with this little girl who was like two or three at the time, and then she ran a boarding house that my grandfather stayed in when he was traveling because he worked for the railroad. He was an engineer. And so he worked for the railroad and he stayed at this boarding house and then they struck up a relationship and ended up marrying, getting married. So anyway, I just think it's such a cool story and it's so neat to be able to go back and read in her handwriting her entries of that time in her life and so it's you know it's not only about um, the the letters and the correspondence with her first husband but then the time after he passed away and how she was surviving that and then how she met my grandfather and so forth and so on it's very interesting so anyway um, so that's not in I mean it's her handwriting but those are copies and so it doesn't even have, it's not fancy, it's just stuff that's copied on copy paper and, you know, someday that's going to go away because, you know, it will fade and it will go away. But you know what, for now I get to enjoy it. So, you know, I'm just saying, even if it wasn't my family, if I got that and I read that, I would be lost in that and absorbed in that for days. Um, Shannon Green, many of you know Shannon ran on to a journal that she was um, somebody sent it to her I think some I think I may have the story wrong but I think she somebody sent her this journal that they had picked up at a yard sale or an auction or something and Shannon I remember her reading that and just being so absorbed by the story in this journal she ended up tracking down the heirs of the person that wrote the journal and contacting them and getting the journal back into their hands. So this was, you know, a um, successive generation. So anyway, I thought that was really cool too. So that wasn't even her family and she got wound up in it, same way I do. Um, okay, CB's grandmother ran a boarding house too. It, that was very common back then. Yeah, hi Muriel. Um, I am lucky to have them, I am. Yeah, and the genealogical value, absolutely. Um, ah, Karina, Karin, 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 Karina. I'm going to say Karina. Did a whole book about her disease so she could accept it. Yeah, I mean, you journal. There's all kinds of reasons to journal, absolutely. Um, yes. Janice, that's a good idea. She says you should make a family tree and attach those documents for posterity. And, you know, I should, and maybe I will someday. Right now, I have to tell you, my life is uh, crazy busy. <laughs> so it's not going to get done anytime soon. Anyway, so moving forward a little bit. Again, little journal, I mean different kinds of journals. Look at the difference in these two 
little journals, okay? See the size difference? This one, this says day by day diary, all right? This is my father's, this is how little he journaled. Um, how do I keep all this nice stuff? It's in various places in my house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's not in a safe. It probably should be, but it's not. Um, but this tiny little book, it's a date book, and uh, I did label it inside that this belonged to my dad. It's a very interesting little book, um, and it has his name and so forth in the front there in his handwriting. This obviously was something that was small enough, and I have another one that I think I might have shown last week, I'm not sure, that belonged to his father, that also was small. And they were small enough, I think, so that they could tuck them in a, a shirt pocket so that it was easy for them to jot down notes. I mean, it's so cute, isn't it? I, I find this thing, and then I lose it, and then I find it, and I lose it. You know, it's, it's always someplace where I think it's in the right spot. <laughs> yeah. So the interesting, the interesting entries in here, there's not very many. Most of them are birthdays that he wanted to remember because it's just a little date book. But this one, I'm going to show this to you. Let me see if I can show it to you real close. I don't know if you can read that or not, but it says, popped the question, 1933, okay? Pop the question means that's the day he asked my mother to marry him. Pretty cool. In his hand, whoops. Yeah, in his handwriting. Isn't that interesting? And here's another one that he wrote right here. This one is Met Grace, August 4th, 1932. That's the day he met my mother. So that's how significant those dates were for my father, who was not a very emotional person. So he put those dates in his little book that he carried around in his pocket so that he would remember birthdays and so forth. Isn't that something? Um, and also there was a letter. And so I'm going to, and I'm going to read you just a teeny little bit of this. Okay. This letter, handwritten. This is written by my mother. Another form of journaling. Letters are another form of journaling. And I have just a few to show you. Again, I'm not going to belabor this whole thing too long. Um, this was written at 10, 18 p.m. on Thursday, May 14th, 1936. And um, so she starts out, this is from my mother to my father. They were going to be married just a month after this date. She says, my own sweet Jimsy. Okay, now let me tell you something. I never knew that my parents had nicknames for each other until I read this letter, which is funny. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. CB says he was a closet romantic. Yes, he was. So I'm not going to do the whole first part of this because it's just, you know, stuff. Now she gets into the meat of this letter. She says, as to the suit. Now this is what I think would be nice whether it's what should be worn at a 1.30 p.m. wedding or not, that I don't know. But if our wedding isn't according to all the customs, etc., I, I should worry, exclamation point. As long as it's nice and as long as we wish it to be, that's all that's necessary. So my mother was even bucking the customs back then. Is that how you feel too? Well, here's what I would like to have you wear. The sporty blue, good-looking coat with white flannel trousers and white shoes. Does that appeal to you, too? You would buy the blue suit with plated back, as you suggested, and also a pair of flannels. Now, remember this, they were getting married in June. <laughs> After the wedding, you could put on the blue trousers instead of the white flannel ones. I think the single-breasted coat much nicer and cooler too. Now she wasn't worried about the flannel pants a minute ago, but you know, I think it would be nice for um, your best man to have white flannels and white shoes also, and so forth and so on. Isn't that fun? So anyway, she goes on. Um, so and a lot of this is family stuff, but then at the end she says, um, she's talking about money. Because my father had, they courted each other for four years to save up enough money to be able to get married. 
She says, I think you have done real well in saving as much money. I hope to have some to contribute to the fund, too. You will let me add what little I may have to your account, won't you? I will be looking forward to hearing your sweet voice Sunday um, at 8.30, your time, 9.30, my time. Must close now and get to bed. All my love and kisses. Forever your own, Peg Sweetie. Now, my mother's name was Grace, and I don't know where Peg Sweetie came from, but that was clearly a nickname that they had for each other. You know, it was one of those inside things. But isn't that a fun little letter? A month later, they got married. And, yes, they kept it. All those years, they kept it. More interesting than that, just a quick little thing to show you. As I said, they courted each other for four years, okay? And they could only talk to each other very infrequently on the phone. And so this is how the communication went. And again, I'm not going to bore you with all of this for long, just very briefly. But everything in here are the letters. And this is very thick. This is a couple of inches thick. These are all copies or the originals of the letters that my father typed most of the time, sometimes hand wrote, to my mother, okay? So these were all kept. So this was all, um, these were all kept by my mother. So my mother kept the letters. These are from my dad to her. So I'm just, you know, grabbing chunks of them and showing you. So my mother kept all of these letters in a folder or in a box or something. And this was all prior to them getting married. These people were prolific. Yes. These people were prolific. So that's how those came to be in my possession. Also, I have a folder and in or a, a notebook. And in this, this is what my dad kept. So this is all my mother's letters in response to his letters. So he kept these all in a notebook, or he kept them and then later put them in a notebook. But this is all her responses to him. So the thing that is so fascinating to me about this is that these were their letters back and forth to each other. So you could, so I, you know, whoever wanted to, whether it was me or again, if someone else found this, I think it would be interesting for them you know, to see how people communicated. Because today we can, we communicate with things and they were all in a um, container like this. Um, today we communicate with text message and Snapchat and Facebook and stuff that blips off the screen. And many of those things are done in uh, shortcuts and all that kinds of things and emojis and things. And I'm not criticizing any of that. I'm just saying, it's really interesting when you have something like this and this is labeled on the outside love letters 32 to 36 so yeah it's pretty cool huh so i just wanted to show you those some different ideas about um about journaling and also about letter writing i encourage people to write letters I have bundles, not a bunch, but I have several bundles of letters that I've put um, elastic around and labeled them as to what they were. So I have letters, you know, that I've kept. Um, these happen; those happen to be from those happen to be from family members. So you know, to me, they're very special, but. Um, Actually, they're from grandparents. I never knew any of my grandparents. They were all gone before I was born. So reading their, uh, their handwriting and their letters is really a way for me to get to know them. So um, Debbie saved every card that her kids and husband ever gave to them and bound them into books. That's really cool. Um, she raised her kids to give cards instead of gifts on Mother's Day and birthdays. How wonderful. Her greatest treasures. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, Josie. She likes also sending note cards. Absolutely. And so she journals every day. Um, 
I missed what that was, Dorothy. Some were written during the year. Something was written during the year you were born, but I missed it. I missed what that was. Oh, some of those letters were, were um, written during the year you were born. Got ya. Got ya. I got it. <laughs> this little book, again, another small book. It's not as tiny as this one. Okay, this one's really tiny. But what I, I this is a different kind of journal that I just wanted to um, call your attention to. This was from one of my um, aunts. Um, let's see. Great aunts. She was, my, this great aunt was a midwife. And so she went around and assisted women with giving, you know, home births because that's what they had. And also in assisting mothers with, you know, getting started with feeding their babies, nursing, and so forth. Well, her handwriting is beautiful all by itself. Let me see if I can show this to you. So this is a list of her babies in 1905. So these are the babies that she helped deliver. And then she gets over here and she starts, um, you know, it's through the different years and so forth. Okay, so this one right here. Wait a minute, let me go back a minute. Just for a quick second to show you. One second. I don't know whether I can show you or not. It's in here somewhere. I won't. Okay, I'm not going to spend the time looking for it. But right here, this is my mother. She assisted my mother in being born. Okay. However, an earlier journal entry in the same book, she assisted with my father's birth. So the same aunt, great aunt, took care of delivering or helping to deliver both my mother and my father. So how interesting is that? So she has um, lots of entries in here in her beautiful handwriting. Isn't that cool? Isn't that a, I mean, who can say that, you know? Okay. Yeah, I just thought I would show, um, share those with you. Hi, Linda. Oh, hope you feel better soon. I do. Ah. <sighs> All right. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to just kind of put those things out there and, again, encourage you to journal or to realize that, that um, journaling is valuable to other people. Maybe you think that your life is incredibly boring and that who could possibly want to know about your life? And um, I can assure you that there are people whether they are today or future generations that will be incredibly interested in your boring life. Okay, so, hi Tam, Tammy. Yeah, absolutely, I just thought I wanted to share that with you. Okay, yeah, the ATC is a way of corresponding today. Good point, yeah, good point. Okay, so last week we did we were going through a lot of that old journal stuff. I had completely different things to show you last week. But this week, um, I want to show you the completed Affirmation Mobile, which is what we did at the end of last week's show. So, I'm going to get, first of all, get my camera here. Now, realizing that my camera, my handheld camera, will be quite, um, you know, so... What I want to do is I want to show you the mobile where I put it and then I'm going to get it down and show it to you in detail. Okay, so here we go. Hang on just one second. Let me see if I can get camera kind of focused there. Okay, so that is where the mobile is living, hanging on the door right there. Okay, so you can see it there. All right. So I'll put this back away. I'm going to get it down and I'm going to show it to you so you can see all the bits and pieces. And don't tell, don't tell the sponsors I just used their camera, okay? Because if we do, we may have a problem on our hand. They think that's their own personal camera.
Okay. It is nice and colorful and it's fun. You know, it's fun. Okay, so from a distance, from where you guys are, I'll just show it to you like this. Um, it's done on a stick from my backyard. The fibers up here at the top, there are yarns and there's a piece of sar silks, the sari silk ribbon, silk sari, whatever, you, whatever the proper word order is, I don't know. And I just tied it around the ends of the stick. Like that. A field trip, exactly. <laughs> took on a field trip okay so that was that so I'm going to I'll show it to you this way first and then we'll I'll put it on the table and we'll look at the individual pieces and parts a little bit just so you can see how it finished up there is a blog post about this and so you can see that at howtogetcreative.com so if you want to see more detailed pictures still pictures you can go there and click on the pictures and you can see them it's the most recent post on the blog. Okay, it's a bit fiddly to um, lay down and you know put it on the table to look at, but we're gonna try it. Okay, let's see if I can show it to you here. I think so. So these, uh, there are words on here. These were stamps, these are Donna Downey stamps. And so I stamped them on, thank you. Um, so I stamped them on some paste paper or jelly plate printed papers and cut them out. And so there's a few of those. This is an affirmation mobile or positive word mobile. So I stamped them and then I went over them with um, black pen also. And so all of them that I liked, that's what I did. So I just cut them out, punched a hole, and put them... On the mobile at different lengths okay so there's a lot of those then last week you were with me when we did some of the tags so again I just tied yarn onto them and suspended them from the stick uh, what else here's another one of the tags like this that we did the silk sari ribbon I got from a local store but you can find it online pretty easily yeah and this is uh, this is not my original idea this was an idea from Lynn and I don't know her last name I don't or I mean I know her last name I just don't know how to pronounce it it's spelled M-O-N-C-R-I-E-F-F -F, I believe um, I did talk uh, talk about that on, in the blog post that I wrote so you can check that out and it is from the inspiration came from a an article in the magazine Somerset Life, Somerset Studio Life, I think it was the one. And um, so it was in there. It was originally published in a different mag, one of the other Somerset or Stampington publications, but I forgot which one. But Somerset Life, I believe, and it's the one that's currently out. So it's inspired from what she did. It's it's different, but it's inspired from what she did. Okay, so then the feathers, which I put, I love that one, not my circus, not my monkeys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Darn Good Yarn has beautiful sari ribbon. Ah, good idea. Thank you, Margaret. So check out Darn Good Yarn. So the feathers have, have um, whatever appealed to me in the moment. And I showed how to do the feathers the week before. Start and end each day with a grateful heart. There are keys on here. The keys you saw me paint last week. So they're on here. Um, what else? Here's another feather. Then I also added charms. And so these are, this was a fabric bead that I made into a bead cluster with some beads and some wire here's um here's another one with a charm attached this was one i purchased so i just attached it to a bead that i created moncrief okay here's another one so again this is uh, those of you that were in the vip class 
these are some of the beads from that that we did and with charms and so forth and beads attached so more more feathers more feathers I used colorful yarns that I liked so different feathers um, more tags I think I might have shown you that one already more words more tags whatever made me feel good that I liked these were wooden tags that I just finger painted with distress paint um, another feather another charm so button and a charm that I purchased and I put them all together with copper wire do I know a great mixed media or scrapbook journal I'm not sure what you're asking uh, Karina hi Signa what was the question I missed it Signa sorry why is a mobile disturbing to me every time I get close to one that is a good question I don't know that would probably be interesting to find out there's probably something back from a long ago time that you had a bad experience one or something yeah or the noise Tammy said or the noise yeah it could be here's another one this is a bead made with um, fabric another charm attached to it with beads turned into a cluster uh, my clock so I added the clock this was a little wooden cutout clock that I painted another word and another feather and more keys and a couple of little tiny words these really need to be with something else because they're not very heavy but. and one final feather and that's this one so that is everything that on this mess when it's on the table like this that's what it looks like but even that is kind of a nice creative mess isn't it that makes me feel good just to look at it like this <laughs> but what's cool about it is the place where I have it hanging on the door which is just right there um, is that when the fan is on or, or the air conditioner which I'm sure you hear blowing in the background the air conditioner the fan or any kind of movement in the room there's enough room around it that the the pieces move which I love uh, Barb can you make dream catchers I never have but this is a little bit like the a dream catcher you know not the same oh, I'm glad you love every individual item Signa <laughs> I'm sorry if it's disturbing <laughs> so we're gonna move it enough of that okay so this is a, a little bit of a frenetic stream we've covered several topics <laughs> uh, I mean a good journal like a newspaper for mixed media um, it doesn't make noise Debbie because I don't have any bells or anything on it but bells would be I mean I love sound so I may go back and put some charms on it that that actually make noise some bells and so forth yeah, Yvonne has, some, has an idea, the Dilusions Journal, uh, Flow Magazine has some journals, the, the, the uh, Strathmore Mixed Media Journal is good, um, it, but you know what, you don't have to have anything fancy for journaling. You can take a composition notebook and by the time you end up gluing things onto it, putting paint on it, putting uh, whatever kinds of stuff you want to on that paper, it will thicken it up. Uh, when it's wet it's a little little vulnerable but when you get stuff on it and it thickens up the paper it'll be fine so some people journal like Dee Dee Willingham is journaling in uh, and has for a long time in magazines so you can do all kinds of things uh, Jane Davenport has one that's true uh, Dina Wakely has one with different kinds of papers so there's a lot really just loads of journals out there or you can make your own out of watercolor paper is another option 
Okay, so there you go. All right, so we got that checked off the list. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna grab, uh, get out the jelly plate. And I am using my Jelly Arts gel printing plate today. And I wanted to show you these things that I bought. And I happened to buy them <coughs> very inexpensively because my local craft store was getting rid of them. I don't know if they're even available anymore, but you know, that's the story. That's where I got these. And I tried to look for links for you, but I could not find them. So I don't, my, it makes me wonder if they're not available now. But these are from Heidi Swap. They are created by American Crafts. So there is the information on the back, American Crafts. But what they are, um, are fabric pennants or fabric flags, okay? So that's what I have. There's 12 in each package. I bought three packages and they come pre-strung, so I've pulled them off the string. And so I just have this little pile of pennants and flags here. But let me tell you, this to me, the, especially because it was they were so reasonable in price, um, it was definitely worth buying them because they're already done. And so this little channel in here is where the string goes. They're not very big. Um, I'll measure them for you so that you know. Um, they measure about about five and a half inches for the pennants. And these I would guess are the same. These are just a smidge longer, so these are about five and three quarters for the pennants. So I'm just going to jelly plate print them. That's what we're going to do. Yes, you could certainly make your own. And I know that there are other um, there are other companies that have pennants and flags out there that are, are pre-done, but the one, these specific ones I could not find for you. These are kind of a stiff muslin. Um, it's not really a linen, but it's kind of a stiff muslin. And so we're just going to jelly plate print them. And what am I going to do with them later? I don't know. At the moment, I just am going to jelly plate print them. Okay, so I'm going to show you my setup. Um, so I have my things that I'm going to print on. And I'm going to get out my plate. I'm going to use my 8x10 plate. And when I work on the 8x10 plate, I'm going to turn it this way so you guys can see it. Uh, this is a piece of plexiglass. It's all crudded up, but that's okay. And I wrap the edges, or Lexan, or whatever. It's uh, thick plastic. I don't, I don't recommend that you put your plate on glass to use it, um, unless it is safety glass, because there's just too much chance of breaking the glass. And uh, yeah, it's not worth. It is not worth taking a chance on that. So either use a plexiglass which is plastic or Lexan or some other kind of acrylic uh, sheet or use a safety glass to do this, okay? If you decide you want to do this. There are many other ways to do this. This is just the way I like to do it. Yeah, that is where I found those pennants and flags was in the clearance section. So makes me wonder if they are not going to uh, carry them anymore. Okay, so I have, this is the 8x10 jelly plate. It is discolored from use. I still have the plastic on it. The Jelly Arts Company says you can get rid of those plastic sheets and just cover it with um, copy paper, which I may do at some point. At this point, I'm just putting the plastic back on it. And store it in its original container and then I just put the the jelly plate right on the plastic um, and then I'm going to put just because it helps release the stuff from my skin later gloves in a bottle this is a shielding lotion this is not guaranteeing that stuff won't get 
past the uh, the barrier into your skin you may still get some chemicals that go through it but what I'm using it for is uh, so I can get the stuff off my hands like paint and stuff more easily Signa I see you in the chat yeah, Patty says you can make a journal with the pendants and flags. Karina wants to know what's favorite magazine. Boy, that's a tough one. I love cloth, paper, scissors. I love the Stampington Press publications like Art Journaling Magazine and, St and uh, Somerset Studio, Art Journaling. I mean, there's just so many, you know? Yeah. Signa, we see you in the chat. Yes, we do. Okay, so um, I'm going to go through my the stencils and stuff that I'm going to be using. I have just some stencils from some various companies. This one is Hurricane from Art Anthology. I really like that one. It, this tends to be a thicker stencil material, but it works fine. This is an inexpensive one from Michaels. These little hand stencils are some of my very all-time favorite masks. Um, I got them, they were clearanced out at Hobby Lobby for $1.43. It was $1.43 that I will forever be grateful for because I use them all the time. This is uh, from the Crafters Workshop. This one is uh, mini quatrefoil also from the crafters workshop okay this is the mini quatrefoil this one is um, mini graceful flower I believe I hope I have these back in the right packages for the ones that I kept the packaging this is from the crafters workshop this is a Julie Fafen Balzer design let's see if I can show it to you this way this is particularly nice on the jelly plate. So I've just selected small stencils and masks. Um, this one is this little guy is cross-hatched frags. Okay, let me show you that so you know what I'm saying. Cross-hatched frags. F-R-A-G-S. That's what this one is. Um, this one is, these are called Balzer Bits, these, this little one. And this one is called Script Star Bits. So I'm just using small stencils and masks because I'm working on a small thing. The crosshatched frags is a lot of fun. These are two leaf bits, and I, I'm not even sure I have the right ones back in the right package. And the other one, yeah, I have two of them called two leaf bits. And, yeah, I think, I kind of think that there's, that actually what comes together might be one of these and one of those in the two leaf bits, but I'm not sure that I have that correct. Anyway, I'm using those. Okay. So I've got those open, so we're done with that. So I have just a little pile of stencils and masks, and then I have two texture tools. That's all I'm going to use. So I have two texture tools. I have a brayer, and I'm going to work only, unless I change my mind, which is possible, with Dilutions paints today, but I could always change my mind. <laughs> you never know, right? You never know. Um, and then off to the side, just so you can see um, what I have over here. Again, handheld camera, which is never ideal. What I have over here, these are some printing plates made with fun foam and shapes that I've stuck on them. So I've got several of these. These are things I made. Okay. So I have those. And then this is just a, whoops, sorry, camera went here. Let me put this in the picture, sorry. Focus camera. 
mistake, mistake, I let the camera look at the white paper and it doesn't, you know, cameras don't like white unless you have the autofocus off. Anyway, um, what I have is a big pad down here of Canson, down here. This is Canson mixed media paper. It's a big old pad of it. It's 14 by 17 and that's what I'm cleaning the brayer off with. Okay. Okay. Let me um, switch the camera before it goes crazy again. Okay. So that's my setup and that's what I'm going to be using. I may use some or all of that, um, but I didn't get out all the rest of the stuff. I have loads and loads of stuff to use with the jelly plate, but I decided I was limiting myself to this much. Okay. So any questions before I get going? Um, don't see any. Okay. So we're going to start out with yellow and um, I'm going to start out with yellow and yellow green on this one. And so what I have is the lemon zest. Okay, lemon zest. And the reason I'm using Dilutions paint is because I want to use them up. I love them, but I want to use them. Don't want them spoiling in the jars. And the other one is called Fresh Lime. And so I'm going to use a um, palette knife. And I'm just going to put some paint on the plate. Okay. Add some paint. And then we're just going to get going. Okay. When you first get your Dilutions paint, they're pretty liquidy. As more air gets into the jars, they begin to thicken. So that's another reason I'm going to use them up so that I can get some new ones at some point. And so I'm, my goal is to use relatively thin coats of the paint. Okay. And as I get the paint on here and I've got a good coat of paint, then I'm going to take the brayer and brayer it off on my big old sheet of white paper. And then I store the brayer on its back and that's where I put it. Okay. All right. So that's how the process is going to go. So I'm just going to add some texture a little bit with this texture tool and then I'm going to print on these various these various um, pennants and flags. So printing on them, just trying to get color to begin with. So all I'm after is color, okay? So we're just going to go for it, see what we get. Okay, so there's that. And we'll use some more. So just putting color on. And then I will also get some deli paper to, uh, once I can't get any more color off with the fabric, then I will get some deli paper to pull off what's left or to print, you know, others, you know, whatever's on there on the deli wrap. Okay, so just pulling up color. Sometimes it is your circus and sometimes it is your monkeys. There you go. <laughs> All right. So this is a piece of deli wrap. And so then this creates translucent paper that can be used for collage or whatever else. 
So we're going to use this color till I get tired of it. Once I'm tired of it, then we'll switch to something else. That's a little much. So do you guys enjoy, um, hopefully some of you have a printing plate of some kind. I hope you enjoy doing printing. Hey, Shu. Nice to see you. So we'll just put some more on here. And just print away. That's what we're going to do today. Put in color and pattern and we'll just see what we do on here, right? See what happens. And as we get darker colors, I'm working from dark, light to dark. As we get darker colors on here, we'll see more. Um definition of things but the first thing we're going to do is just get color on here <clears throat> now you could do this with sprays can you see the texture on here that's coming from the the um, texture tool I used So just adding color. With fabric, I find that you need to use a little bit more paint. Quantity wise, you need to use a little bit more paint. Um, I'm not using a ton of paint and the reason is because I want to be able to put multiple layers on here so I don't want it to be super wet. But if you want really good coverage on fabric, I find that you need to use more paint. Okay, and then let's just go, and here's a piece of deli wrap that's got some stuff on it, so we'll just put this on here. So what you end up doing, or what I end up doing, because everybody has their own way of working with a jelly plate, or a gel press plate, or any other kind of mono printing plate. Um, you have your favorite things, your favorite tools, and your favorite papers, and your favorite ways to use it. Now this is cool because what happened here is the paper was wrinkled and so as I put it down it left a texture so we're going to leave it there and we're just going to add some more paint on top of that and I'm just going to use the yellow this time. And if I get tired of using the Dilutions paints, which I usually don't, but if I do, I'll switch to some of the other paints that I've got. Because I know I got plenty of paint to just monkey around with. Okay, so. Use some pressure when you're working with fabric. I use some pressure and pull off whatever. Whatever wants to come off will come off. When you're mono printing, um, you end up with it on your hands. Yes, you do. That's the reason that we have um, that I put on the gloves in a bottle to start with to kind of help get my hands in a position that I can get the stuff off when I'm done. And I may at some point go back and put paint or sprays or something on the backs of these, but that's not going to happen today. Okay, so I'm just trying to pick up all the paint that wants to come off here and just get some color on. I'm going to get another piece of deli wrap 
and see what wants to come off on it. I love printing on the deli paper, this thin translucent paper, because um, then you can layer it in your art journals or on cards or whatever you want to layer it on. And it makes, it just makes luscious prints. Luscious. Okay, let's go. We have this many more to do, so hang with me. A little bit more yellow. Did I have trouble with the pink? Yeah, my original pink and purple were both um, clumpy, but they replaced them. No questions asked. No problem, no question. Right now I have an overhead fan on and I also have an air conditioner going, which of course is, um, both are conducive to drying things out. So that's one reason that I work pretty quickly. So just getting color. And I'm just, tossing them on a pile. The color is, the paint coat is thin enough that it's okay for me to do that. They're not sticking to each other. All right, let's go again, see if we can get some more off of here. Don't know if you have, um, deli wrap in the Netherlands. It's the same kind of paper that they hear that they wrap sandwiches in. If you buy a sandwich in a like a sandwich shop, you know, like one where you would go get a sandwich to go where they hand it to you, it helps to keep the sandwich from leaking down your down your front. It's that kind of paper. It's that thin paper. That's what I'm using. I'm sure it has some other name in uh, other countries. Is there a substitute for deli paper? Um, maybe a parchment paper, baking parchment, or something like that. Uh, maybe somebody in the chat could answer that question better than I could. Since I'm not in your country, it makes it, it's always a trick to try to figure out what things are called in different countries. I do know that you can order the um, deli wrap from Amazon if you have that ability. I just get mine from my local supermarket. So, Okay, we've got one more load here, so we're going to go one more time with some yellow. Just yellow. Tracing paper is the closest. Yeah, it's very, that is very similar. Um, they are different, but it's very similar. It's probably, probably is very close to the same. Although I've never printed on tracing paper. Maybe some of you guys in the chat have printed on tracing paper. So I had three sets of these little flags, so that means there were 36 of them. So I thought, why not? Let's just work on all of them. And I may end up um, putting, when I get finished with them, I may end up putting words on them because I put words on most things. So there's that. those two. So 
So I, you can tell on these where the front side is and where the back side is. So I'm printing on the front. And you could paint these with a brush, um, of course, but they, you're going to get a lot more paint on them. This way I'm just able to control the amount of the paint. Lori says she's used wax paper for spray inks and it worked really well. Cool. That's good information. And Nancy says the paint peels off the wax paper. Okay. I'm not, I haven't printed on wax paper. I've used wax paper to texture the plate, but not necessarily to try to print on. So. It's always good to have other people's experiences. So, all right. So I'm tired of those two color combinations, so I'm going to put the lid on the green at the moment. I'm going to use a little bit of the yellow, and I'm going to use a little bit of the orange. So this is squeezed orange. So I'm going to use some squeezed orange. And it does not bother me if they get a little bit contaminated from one jar to the other. It's just not a big deal to me. If that bothers you, then by all means clean off your knife in between applications of paint on the plate. One of my favorite byproducts of this process is the um, brayer paper. When I get finished um, and fill one of the sheets of the brayer paper, I absolutely love that. Okay, so just a little texture. Barb, do you need a jelly plate to rest the paint you transfer to the paper? Do you need a jelly plate to rest the paper, rest the paint you transfer to the paper? I'm sorry, I'm not understanding the question. Pablo says, like the paper, tissue paper, the florist wrap fresh flowers in. Good point, Pablo. Yes. Can you use any thick kind of plastic for um, for printing on, you mean, instead of the plate? Is that what you're asking? If that's what you're asking, um, I would try I would try it, absolutely. There's no reason not to. Now, the jelly plate or the gel press plate is a different, it will have a different response than a plastic a sheet of plastic, but you know what? There's no reason not to try it. Yeah, there's no, absolutely no reason not to try it. You can use a piece of glass. You can use a piece of plexiglass or Lexan or acrylic and, and you're going to get a different a different product or a different end result, but you're still going to get monoprints and, and that's what this process is all about. It's monoprinting. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would absolutely try. I, my policy is, and always has been, try everything. You can also make one. Um, you can make one if you have access to gelatin, and um, I think it's gelatin and plain gelatin and glycerin and something else. Uh, maybe water. If you look online, Lindsay the Frugal Crafter has a recipe. I'm sure there are other recipes available. Uh, for making making your own plate. So yeah, there's um, all kinds of all kinds of ways to there's all kinds of ways to do that. I almost said skin a cat, but we don't want to say that. Not around here. Around here it would be highly frowned upon to skin cats. Alright, let's see if this will pull up some of this. So you can see the different colors 
blending. Now if you want really good clear colors from one to the next, you need to clean the plate you know, when you're changing colors. I'm not going to be doing that because it'll be cleaning up for what I want to do. So there is the rest of that deli paper. It takes a couple of minutes for these deli papers to dry, so I kind of keep them spread out. I don't stack them on each other. The same way that I've let the uh, the little flags stack up, I'm not, because there's, there's not a lot of paint on this so I don't let the deli wrap stack up. So I'm going to turn this whole thing over because this is the ones that I started with. So that way I'm going to pull from the bottom and I'm going to be working toward the top. All right, so I'm just going to clean off my knife here. You can work, use the box of fast foods, okay? Alcohol and water. So, lots of different ways that people have to work with things. If you need to put water in these, I recommend that you use, um, yeah. Okay, somebody, somebody put in the chat what that kind of water is. Dead water. Get it in the grocery store. It comes out of a um, dehumidifier. It's escaping me. Okay, it's just blip out of my head. Yeah, blip out of my head. That's terrible. Okay, let's, um, actually I'm going to keep the orange and I'm going to do the orange and I'm going to do some red. Hey, Krissa. Ooh, it sounds lovely, Krissa. Distilled. Thank you very much. Distilled. Why did that blip out of my head? And this is the post box red. So I'm going to use these two colors now. Yep, distilled water. I recommend that you use that as opposed to tap water. Distilled water will be cleaner because it is truly dead. Doesn't have any stuff in it. Okay, so we've got red and orange. So we're going a little darker. Hope I didn't get too much paint on the plate here. We'll find out. You want it covered. Probably one of the most challenging things when you're monoprinting is to get the right amount of plate paint on your plate. Not too much, not too little. It's a Goldilocks thing. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to put some stencils on here or masks stencils and masks things that kind of have some open area and this little area here will just add a little bit of texture to okay so this is our little flag so I, I'm not going to be picky about this I'm just going to pick an area and I'm going to push kind of hard so that it will print through the openings in my stencils and masks. Ta-da! It is like magic, people. It is like magic. Okay, so let's go some more. Thanks, Nancy. Barb, do you recommend buying a big or small jelly plate if I get the chance? Um depends on what you like to do. Um, okay, so there's that one. If you enjoy doing, I know this is going to sound goofy. Okay, here's what I would do if it were me and I had to pick one. I, if, if space is not an issue, I would go for the larger one because you have more options. You can always print small on a larger jelly plate. You just don't have to put as much paint on it if you want to print small things, okay? That would probably be my way of doing this. Hey, Shannon. <laughs> Shannon, I was talking about you. Yeah, I was. What was I talking about? Um, what were we talk what was I talking about? If I was talking smack about Shannon, I should tell her. 
right? I was talking about you, but now I forgot what I said. <laughs> How sad is that? The sun is finally there for Krissa. Yay! Isn't that fun? Hi, Amina. Nice to see you in the chat. I don't think I've seen your name in the chat before. Oh, yeah, I was talking about that journal. <clears throat> I was showing old journals, Shannon. <clears throat> and I was talking about that journal that somebody sent you that um, you really enjoyed reading and then you found the heirs, somebody that that person was related to, and you sent the journal to them. That's what it was. So it wasn't smack at all. It wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't. Okay, here's before. So you can see that I'm really getting quite a few prints off of what's on here. Then we're going to pull it off and we're going to print what's underneath. Rubbing alcohol is, I think, surgical spirits is an, another name for it. Somebody can correct me. Oh yeah, you can print small on a bigger plate. Absolutely, just don't put as much paint on. You can do that. Okay, I'm going to go till I can't get anything else off of this with these stencils. Then we'll pull them off. Okay. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay. She, Shannon tracked down the family, sent the journal to the son. It was his mother's. Can you imagine? Okay, I, this is worth, look, I'm even stenciling my fingers. Yes, this is worth putting on camera. Can you imagine how amazing that would be to be that son, to get that mother's journal back? I mean, people, if that doesn't pull at your heartstrings, you are cold as ice. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Okay, so it's I still am getting a little bit of um, paint coming through the stencils, but I'm about, <laughs> I think I'm about at the end of what there is here. Let's go for one more. Let's see, I can still see a little paint shining through. I know, they're looking kind of cool, aren't they? Can you imagine what my hands will look like at the end of this printing session with all these 36 little flaggy things? But look, I'm still getting paint as many of the, and I have printed, okay, let's see how many I've printed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I've printed ten of these flags so far. With this one application of paint. Yeah. That even surprises me, I have to tell you. So there's some more. We're still getting, we're still getting color coming off. Okay, I think that's about it though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these stencils off. I'm going to put them on that big sheet, of, uh, big pad of paper I showed you a minute ago. Give them a quick um, stencil, a quick brayer, very quick. Do not, do not let painty stencils stay on the paper. They will glue themselves to the paper. And don't stack them up. If you do, you're going to be sorry. Because they will stick to each other. Okay, let's see if we can get any more off of here. How cool is that, huh? I mean, how cool is that, people? Remember, I, this is the same application of red and orange paint. Yeah, you won't have any stencils left if you stick them all together. You definitely will be sorry. Okay, 
So I'm just going to put some more on here just to see if I can get a little bit more. But aren't those, I mean, when you start out doing this process, you go, yeah, well, that's just really nice, Barb, <laughs> until you start seeing more layers. And then you go, oh, now I'm getting it if you've never seen this before. Yeah, you can get some really interesting patterns. And you can be just as, as picky with this as you want to be. You know, you can you can get very meticulous. I don't do meticulous monoprinting. I do haphazard monoprinting because that's what I like. Bye, Yvonne. Okay, so let's see if we can get any more in the middle of that. And I did. So you can just keep going until the, pr the plate stops printing. And I didn't even have all that much paint on here, folks. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't move like the mobile. That's right. Um, is it Tara? I don't know if that's how you say your name, but welcome or goodbye. I'm using um, dilutions for this, Shannon. That's all I'm using is dilutions. But I'm telling you, it's just gone and gone and gone and gone. It's printed and printed and printed. So with one application of paint, let's count again. So one application on the plate. Now you can see it's getting lighter, which I'm, I love that when it gets lighter and lighter. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that one I love, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So we got half of our flags done with the second color um, with one application of paint on here. How cool is that? I mean, really, how cool is that? Okay, let's do it again. Let's do it again. So we're going to put a little we're going to put a little less red this time cuz it's a very strong color. I'm going to put the lid on it so that I don't use this one again cuz I'm done with that. Let's put some orange on here. So more orange than red this time. So what are you guys up to? Are you doing anything um, fabulously creative this afternoon? Or are you just watching? That's fine too. Okay, paint. Let's see if we can get a good load of uh, stencils out of this one. Or printing. Yeah, you never know. I might have just gotten lucky the first time. It's, it's possible. It's entirely possible. Okay, there, and then we're just gonna add some lines here and there. Just watching. Oh, I'm sorry you're too ill to do anything. Well, I'm glad I'm here to entertain you. Okay, so here we go. Let's see what we can get out of these, okay? There we go, let's do something there. Okay, got a little bit there. Okay, let's go over here and see what we get. First you watch and then you do. I understand that totally. First you watch and then you do. Okay, so we got that. Okay, let's keep going. What else can we get? I, I really like the haphazard way of printing, I have to tell you. Okay, this one needs a little help here, so let's come over here and see if we can get some 
color, which we did. That's good enough. Okay, let's go right here in the middle, see what we get. I'm using a fair amount of pressure so I can get down through the stencils. Okay, well that's not very pretty, but that's not the last color, last round of color we're going to use. A notebook from paper cl polymer clay. Oh, cool. Linda's watching from bed. Okay. I think it's nice to be able to do that. Okay, so there's that. All right, let's see if we can get any more. Then we're going to pull, pull off the stencils and see if we can print from what's underneath. The paint is the Dilutions paint. Dilutions is the brand, D-Y-L-U-S-I-O-N-S, -S, but you can use any craft paint. You can use any artist grade paint. Um, student grade uh, it's, would be my preference because a student grade I find to be a little thinner consistency. If it doesn't, um, if the paint doesn't work for you real well, if it's too thick, you can always add a little bit of um, Glaze me glazing medium or retarder. Okay, I'm brayering off the stencils again very quickly. Again, don't stack them on top of each other, so you glue them together. You don't want to do that, and don't leave them on the paper. If you do, you're going to hate yourself. Okay, so see what we can get. I might have just gotten lucky the first time we did this. So the prints, once you start printing what's underneath, it's a little um, more subdued. The prints aren't quite as sharp. Yeah, we're going to have to do this one again because this one's not printing quite as well. I got lucky the first time. That's all right. Okay, and let's see if we can get one more. No, okay, we're gonna have to do that one again. All right, let's see if we can pull any of this off with um, a sheet of deli paper. So Chris has been using chalk paint on a closet where she has some art things and then she distressed it and she's finally started stenciling with Viva Decor bronze paint. Um, and she's hoping to finish tomorrow. Cool! Melody Zentangling and a color book page, or a color page. That's wonderful. So there's another piece of deli, um, printed deli paper which is fun. Okay, we're going to go one more time because I've got one more load of stencils here. And I'm just going to add just a smidgen of red. I said I wasn't going to use any more red, but I had to. I had to break my own rule. Just a little bit. Okay, a little bit of red. Hey Joycey. Miss Joycey Noodle, I didn't know you were in the in the chat. Good to see ya. Able to rejoice, I call Noodle. Her her real name is Joyce. And she is very creative and super, super recycler. She is a recycling queen, let me tell you. She does great stuff out of recycled materials. Okay, let's um, stick some more masks in here. Let's do, let's do this one, and I'm gonna go back to the quatrefoil because I like it, and I'm gonna go back to these flowers, and I'm gonna go back to the frags because I like these frags. Okay. So today, Signa had made. Um, 
boxes, and tomorrow she'll mono print with whatever she can find in her supplies. Cool. Okay, so there we go. So there we go. Keep going. We're, we only have this many more to do, so just a few with this load of paint. Then we're going to switch colors and we're going to use some masks. Different kinds of masks. The hand masks. Masks. There are some words in the English language that are really hard to say. The multiple of mask and the multiple of clasp are tongue twisters. Masks and clasps. Sounds like a snake. Okay, so we got that. Let's get some on the side here. A little on the side. A little on this side. So we got that. Okay, let's see if we can get any more. You just don't know unless you just go here a little bit more. Thank you so much for everyone joining me today. I really appreciate your time. And those of you watching the recording, thank you for taking your time to watch the recording. Love to have you come over to howtogetcreative.com and check us out where you're going to find all kinds of different creative arts classes from a wide variety of subjects. If you like, if you enjoy creativity in general, you're the kind of person that we built how to get creative for. If you only are interested in one specific subject, then it might not be your place because there's all kinds of stuff there. So I'm just, again, pulling off the stencils and printing them on my big old sheet of paper over here, just running the brayer over them to get the excess paint off. And we've only got a couple of flags left, so let's see what we can get. Only two left to go. How about that? Okay, so we got that, that one. And this one. Hello, Vicki. Um, it depends on how much paint, Dawn. She wanted to know how hard I was pressing. It depends on how hard, how much paint I have on the plate. In this case, I don't have a lot of paint down there, so I'm probably pressing harder than it appears that I am. Yeah. Okay, so there's that one. So you can see they get a variety of, of looks. So let's go back to um, one of these pieces of deli wrap that had color on it. Maybe this one. So this is one we did earlier when we were cleaning off the plate. So let's put this on here and see what we get. But I like having using the papers to kind of help pull up the excess paint. Okay, so Anne says she jellied on tracing paper and it worked fine. Excellent. That's great. Hi, Marion. That's wonderful. Hi, Sheila. Oh, thank you. That's really sweet. Okay, so this has got the yellow underneath and then the orange and red on the top. You just can't get that any other way than by printing using some sort of plate. I mean, that I know of anyway. So this one has green and yellow on it. So let's see if we can get some more. Now I'm using more pressure because I really want to see how much of this paint I can pull up. So I'm using more pressure. And you can see how it is pulling more of that paint up. And the, when you do these prints like this that, you know, clean this paint off the plate, these, uh, these are some of my favorite, favorite, favorite prints to work with, favorite papers to work with. I love creating, just creating all different kinds of papers, 
colors and patterns and all that and then working with them I just it's so much fun it is so much fun okay so here's our little stack of flags that we did okay there's our stack of flags with that color combination so I'm going to turn the whole thing over like this because this is the driest part we're going to put those down and now we're going to switch to another another yeah the final pulls are, are yummy yeah with color and pattern yeah you are welcome Melody okay so the next color combination we're gonna do so I'm gonna put these away so we've used yellow and we've used um, so lemon zest fresh lime we've used squeezed orange and we've used um, postbox red so I'm going to put those back over here because I'm not going to use those again at the moment. So what we're going to use is I'm going to use the purple and the pink. Um, and these are my ones that are uh, that were not so good. So these are the ones I'm going to use because I want to use them up. I don't want to throw them away. So this is crushed grape. And so this is one that's kind of cruddy looking. So let's see how it works on the plate. I may have to spray some water on it. And then this is the pink, which is, uh, the name is eluding me at the moment. And it's hidden under my big X, bubblegum pink. Okay, so let's put some bubblegum pink on here. And I'm going to spray some water on top of that just because that purple is kind of goopy looking. Okay, so here we go. So it'll be interesting to see how this prints. I may have to just break out the other purple. <laughs> yeah, these are not brayering on the plate very smoothly at all. Could be really interesting though. Hey, you never know. We might have something cool going on. Okay, so now let us do this. We're gonna um, texture the plate. This is really goopy in here. And I'm gonna put down some mask. So we're going to put some uh, leaf shapes here and there. And the reason I'm leaving the stems hanging off the plate is because it's easier to pick them up. And um, let's do this little one that has the star on it. Alright, let's see what we get. Um, oh, thanks, Krissa. About the pliers, that was our video we put up this week about what are pliers. I'm guessing that's the one you're talking about. We did, we've done several of them, different ones. Okay, so you see what we get? Layering the color. Now, I'm not pushing very hard because the paint on this is pretty goopy. But that's one of the reasons I'm doing it. I'm using the, this goopy paint. Okay, so we got that. You may have to come back next week and uh, we'll finish these up. What would you think of that? Would you enjoy seeing the next part of my thought process so you get to see it all rather than uh, just have me finish it and write a blog post around it? <laughs> Now this has got real texture on it because it picked this this pink. Let's see if I can show this to you. Okay, look right in here. You see that? That has got definite texture on it right there. So this one is going to get set to the side because that one will stick to the others because there's a lot of paint right there. Okay, so let's go this way. Um, yep, Joyce, I love my shapes. Yes, I do. Haven't got the hands out going 
going yet, but we're going to. Now this is another one that's got thick paint. The pink really um, stayed nice and goopy, so I'm going to have to set that one off to the side as well. And this is going to be another one, but hey, let's just do it. Hmm? Okay, we got that one. Let's get some more. A little bit, not so good, but you know, it's all. It's not bad. It's just not great. What I'm going to do on these that are really thick is I'm going to do this. I'm just going to spread that paint out so it doesn't take forever and a day to dry that. Do the same thing here. So just moving that paint because it really was way too thick. Okay. See if we can get anything else up here. Okay, so we've got some purple coming in. All right, let's see if we can get some of this pink to pick up through the hurricane. Yes, and I'm going to spread that out. So the, the moral of this story is don't use the goopy paint to do this. I'm going to crack out the other fresh containers here because this is too goopy to get a, a smooth coat and so it's doing some, it's going to take too long to dry. So we're going to find a different way to use those paints. Because I just, I'm not going to throw them out because, you know, I don't want to do that. I'm just brayering off the paint on my, on the back side of the masks. All right, let's see what we can get here. I'm going to, I'm going to just... Smooth some of this out a little bit with my finger. Okay. Okay, um, it's a Amelie. I don't know. Do I have your name written down? Let's see. Let's look on my magic list and see. Don't think I do. So I'm not exactly sure how to say your name, but I'm glad. Yeah, wasting paint supplies is just against my better judgment. Just is. Okay, so we got that. Hey, Braddy Patty. Okay, so we got that. And yeah, some of these are not looking so pretty, so it's a good thing we have one more layer to put on these. And then we'll also come back over the top of them with some other stuff. Because who could leave well enough alone when it comes to this? No, you got to keep going. Yeah, okay, so we got that. Okay, so we got that. All right. And let's see if we can get this. We're going to just go for a, I think we're just going to go for a new piece of deli wrap. Unless this one's dry. Let's see. This one's pretty dry. Let's go right over the top of this. So we pulled off a bunch of that. A little bit more of that. Yeah, see these are some of my favorite prints just with all the the stuff. 
I still have my patient sounding voice, Joyce. <laughs> Well, that's good. That's good. All right, so pulled off a little bit of that. Okay, let's close these up. And just before we knock off for the day, let's crack open the other pink and purple that were the replacements from Ranger and let's compare, shall we? Let's compare. These I have not opened at all. They're still wrapped in plastic. So let's see what the difference is. You really should open replacements and check them. You know what I mean? But I didn't. So we'll see. You could listen to me talk all day. Oh, don't tell Clausman. I don't think he would agree with you. And don't tell the technical department. I know he wouldn't agree with you. <laughs> all right. Let's. They got these puppies double wrapped. Double wrapped. They want to make sure they weren't leaking, they weren't doing anything. Boy, I'm telling you, they wrapped and wrapped and wrapped. And this one, they double wrapped it. Okay, look, that's all the packaging on those two pots of paint. Okay, let's crack them open and see what they look like. Oh, much better. Now this is very, when you open your um, containers of dilutions, when they're brand new, they're very runny and soupy like this. That's how they're supposed to be. As you could see, some of the other ones I was using, I've had for quite a while, and so they're not quite so runny and soupy. Now this one's not looking so runny and soupy. Let's see. Let's see. It's not as runny and soupy as the pink one, but it's uh, it's still pretty liquidy. But it's not as soupy as the other one. You can see that. Different formulations, different colors have different consistencies, I find. Okay, let's see what we get. Cleaning off my little stick. All right, let's see what we get. This one is really soupy, folks. Yes, look, see that? See what I mean? It is soupy. This one I have to be careful with so I don't turn it over. Very careful. All right, let's put some purple on here. Now this is more the consistency of the other ones I was working with. Let's see what we get. Now it was probably overkill on the purple there, but you know. And remembering that I still have some of the kind of cruddy paint underneath. Okay. So let's um, let's come back with see what do we want to use let's use this hurricane again let's use these flowers again let's put the frags back on and let's put these leaves the leaf shapes on and then in the middle here there's a little bit of space so I'm just gonna take um, this texture tool. This is a Martha Stewart striping tool, I think it's called. And just put a few little marks here and there. Because we can. Okay, let's print. Okay, Noodle, what are you what are you picking up on what I said? Who knows what I said? Okay, so there's that one. That's printing better. Okay, I love this stencil here, the frags. Love that mask. That's a fun one. Oh, pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay, 
Let's keep going. What are we going to get here? That's nice. I like that. All right, let's see what we can get out of this hurricane. Oh, not very much. Okay. Sometimes you don't. This one is, this one is so close together that um, it's not going to print very well in this particular instance. When I pull it, off, well, that's kind of cool. When I pull it off, pull this off and print what's underneath, we'll get more definition out of that. Now that I love. I love the way that printed. That so far is probably my favorite of everything I've done. But yeah, it could just be me. It is. Every single time you pull up something, it is a big surprise. There are some people that can do this and know what they're going to get. I'm not one of those people. In fact, I would not want to know what I was going to get. I just enjoy being surprised by what the plate decides to do. And see, that's not my favorite. So we're going to go again over here and see if we can get something else. Now, I like it better because I got more definition, more color more pattern. Okay, let's do this right here. So we're going to go until, oh that's cool too. We're going to go until this paint, this particular load of paint on the plate gives up. And then we're going to switch colors. There's another one. We're going to switch colors. We're just going to pull this off. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to lightly pick this up because this is going to have a lot of paint. Well, that was a little too light. Well, never mind. We'll just go with a little more pressure. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to laugh at yourself. Not my favorite. That's okay. Let me pull the rest of these off. Let's see what we get here. Okay, a little bit of that. And let's put a little bit down the side. We'll leave this one kind of stripey looking. Okay, so we got that. All right, so there's what it looks like now. Okay, let's put it on here and see what we get. I know, the surprise is, the, is my favorite thing about it. Yep. Oh, fun. And these little flags are so cool because they're already made for you. I'm getting um, I'm getting paint on my ring. It's gonna it's gonna have to go visit the jewelry cleaner. Okay, so we got a little bit of that, a little bit of that. So you can see as the plate starts losing the definition, then you start losing the pattern. which is fun. It's fun to see what it does. Okay, so we got a little bit there. And we've still got a little bit, so there's that one. We still have a little bit. Now, of course, the, you know, there are times when I have gone too far with a print and I go, oh, I wish I hadn't gone quite that far. And sometimes that happens. You go, okay, well, whatever. That one, see, now I'm not getting much paint, not getting much in the way of print. So that means the the print or the plate is pretty much dry and it's not going to do anything else. So um, we've got just a few more. Okay, if you guys want to hang in here with me just a little bit longer, let's do one more load of the purple and the pink to print the rest of these. Then I'm going to show you one more. Um, with the hand mask just because it's my favorite. I love the little hand masks. Okay, lids on paint. This is good. <laughs> Joyce remembers when Clausman gave me back my wedding rings. 
Yeah, for a long time I wasn't wearing my rings because um, we broke them. We were trying to make them, we were trying to enlarge them a little bit, and um, we broke them. And so one year for Christmas, that's what I asked him to do was to get my rings fixed. He'd forgotten that we even broke them. So it was really nice to get them back. I'm sure everybody thought I wasn't married. <laughs> Okay, just cleaning off the brayer here. All right, let's um, let's go back and we'll do the. Here's what I'm going to do. Instead of putting those masks on, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to um, texture the paint, okay, like so. And I'm going to put a few of the masks, these little hand masks. Why is that such a hard word to say? I don't know. Anyway, we're going to put a few of these on here, like so. Just here and there. And those are all the small ones. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this flag. I'm going to put it down on top of this, like this, and print. Now, if you haven't seen this done before, this, I think, is really fun. Personally, I think it's very fun. Well, no, you didn't get to see it. <laughs> Never mind. These colors may not be working for me. I may have to switch to the other colors. Okay, that didn't work. Let's try another one. This is usually my very favorite step in this process, but I think the colors might not be working for me. Oh, here we go. Okay, this one's better. So you can see how the hand mask, it saves the paint that's underneath, and then the rest of the color prints around the mask. So there you go. All right, let's see if we can get some more of those, shall we? So here it is before. Let's see what we get. As I said, it's always a surprise. Okay, there we go. So we got some hands showing. I love that. I love that. Um, so here's another one. Let's go here. So I'm using a fair amount of pressure, which I wasn't the first time. So that's why I didn't get a very good print. A little more pressure. And that, it, the plate is running out of paint, but you can kind of see it here. So anyway, we're going to stop with that just simply because I don't want to completely, um, I want to be able to come back with the masks and, and be able to use some of the color and so forth before I, if, if I just do this and keep going and keep messing with it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make colors muddy and I don't want to do that so we're going to pull these off and that may not have made any sense the words that I just said but it's the truth okay let's come with this print right here so we've got this one that has all kinds of stuff on it let's see what we can pull off of this pull off of this baby Oh boy, let me remember your name. Uh, da, 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 da. Nairi, Nairi, hello. Okay, so see the hands? Love that, love that. Let's see if we can get any more off of this print. Get off this plate. Then we're going to clean the plate up and then we're going to go and then I think what we'll do is we'll just save this till next week so that folds a little bit. We'll save this till next week and we'll do continue and finish this process. Okay so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a metallic paint. Uh, this is Emperor's Gold. And before I do that I'm going to use um, 
and I'm going to get all kinds of people that are going to spaz out about this. And uh, so I'm going to explain to you what I'm doing. I'm using a heat tool and I'm holding it very far away from the plate and I'm just wafting the warm air over the plate. Do not use your um, your heat gun down on your plate. You will not be happy. So I'm just wafting it over to dry the paint on the plate and the, plate, the uh, heat gun is moving. <clears throat> And it is probably eight inches away from the plate. And this is the heat tool. This is not the embossing gun. Just to dry that the surface of that paint a little bit more. And then I'm going to put this uh, metallic craft paint on a kind of a soupy coat of the craft paint. So this is pretty wet like so. And we'll see if I got enough paint on here. And I'm going to use a piece of black cardstock. And we're just going to see what we pull off, you know. Sometimes I love it on black, sometimes I don't. So you want to rub this with quite a bit of pressure. And we may not get it all in this one go, but we'll get some of it. And then I'll clean the plate up after a while. Okay, here we go. Yeah, we'll get a lot of it. So what you can see is the gold and the purple and whatever else was, was showing pulls up. And on the black, you get to see that metallic shine through, which is, again, one of my favorite so to clean this up I'll clean this up using um, hand sanitizer and paper towels and that'll clean it up because that's how I like to work with the plate okay enough of that um, I want to show you the paper the brayer paper that I was working with over here just so you can see what what yumminess was going on over here so every time I was um, after I brayered on the jelly plate then I was brayering off on the great big sheet of paper and so you can see some of the stencils on here you can see some of the stencils there different places so I was cleaning those off as well okay and this is absolutely some of my most favorite paper ever so that is that I love the brayer papers, the roll-off papers too, CB, I do. All right, so we have this little stack of um, flags going on here. And um, come back next week, we're going to add a little bit more to them. And then we're going to play with them. Yeah, we're going to play with them after that. All right, so I'm just going to stick these all together. So let's, I'll go through them one at a time so you can see what's what. So you can see what we're doing today. Okay, so this camera gives you the truest color so you can see what's happening. So this is the yellow and the orange layers with a little bit of the green. So I'm just going to flip through these pretty quickly so you can see them. Now you could stop any time. You don't have to continue putting layers of color on. You could just stop at any time. Um, the question of where to get the hands, those were actually these masks. I'm assuming this is what you're asking about, Cigna. These hand masks, these I got, at a, they were closing them out in a 
in a craft store and so you know they're not available but what you can do is just cut them cut a shape out of plastic because that's all it is it's just out of plastic and you could have your own and they would be yours not like anybody else's so here's more well I don't know they might be mobiles it's hard to say maybe I should move these out of the way so you can see a little bit better so there's that one here's this one with the hands and that one Clarity Stamps has a large hand mask, okay? That's an idea. The thing I liked about this collection of the hands <clears throat> is the varying sizes. <clears throat> I'll show you the different sizes that came in this collection. So there was a tiny one and then the next size and then the next size I think that was it. So there were three different sizes in that collection. So that's what I liked about them, you know, so you could use the different sizes. But anyway, that's just what I liked. Okay, so a few more. So there's that and that and this one and this one. I like adding enough layers that you don't see any one particular thing, but what you're looking at is you're looking through, down through the layers. That's the kind of printing that I personally like. So that's why I tend to keep printing until I go, yep, yeah, that's it, enough. There's that one. This is one of my favorites at the moment, but that could change. That could change at any moment. But I think it's just a lot of fun to see the results that you get. Unpredictable. Different amounts of clarity. Some of them messy. Yeah, you might wear your blindfold next, next week. That's right. I like this one too. Looks like you're kind of looking down through water or something in that one. Okay, so that's all of them. Yeah, that's what we did today. And then on top of those, uh, what we did were, we got this print, this one, these, this, this one's cardstock. Okay, this is cardstock. This is deli paper. So you can see the um, thinness, it's very thin. And this one, this one has hardly anything, so this will be good for other stuff. And that one, and that one, and this one, which was all wrinkly to start with. So this has got a lot of texture on it. You can see. Can you see all the texture on that? Because it was wrinkled up to begin with. So that is very cool. Okay, so that is what we got. And other than that, I just have a big mess to clean up. So all of these stencils and tools and stuff will go into a big uh, sink of hot water with Murphy oil soap. That's what I. That's what I use to clean them up, and I let them soak, and then all the paint will just come off works like a charm okay um, if you have any questions please put them in the chat in capital letters I'm gonna let the uh, sponsors come out yeah in this mess we're gonna let the sponsors come out I'm gonna put this rag over my painty stencils so that I don't have painty sponsor feet yeah okay Let's see what we, and then this big old piece, this is that big old piece of paper that I was working on. 
So I'm going to put that off to the side too because that's got a little bit of paint yet, wet paint on it. All right, we're ready for the sponsors. Of being in there. You are welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Let me get the monitor out of the way so you don't have to look at yourselves, looking at yourselves, looking at yourselves. <laughs> Here's Mr. Chance. He is a sponsor, one of the two sponsors that sponsored the show. Are you coming up? Charlie gets up from having his nap and he decides to cough, so he's not getting up on the table. No, he's not. And besides that, look, you get wonderful painty hands. Yeah. That's why you put gloves in a bottle on your hands before you start this process, because no matter what you do, you're going to end up with paint all over your hands. Okay. All right, Charlie, seriously, go in the other room. Go. One, one, one. Stop. I don't know why he always has to do that on Friday at the end of the show, but he does. All right, we are going to head out. Um, thank you so much for joining me. It is, uh, it's been a great day, and we will take up on uh, the project and finish it next week. <laughs> you are welcome. Uh, Murphy oil soap is the trick. You want to use quite a bit of it. Uh, don't skimp on the Murphy oil soap. You want to put quite a bit of it in the water and it will soak everything clean so it works great all right uh oh good thanks cb all right i will see you all next week friday 2 p.m eastern same time same place and uh, i will see you then so until next time remember to get creative today because you know it's easy and the sponsors and i will see you next friday have a good one everybody bye